especially for the studio audience here. If you guys have questions or comments, we want to hear them, and we want to try to get in this discussion more comments and questions from online. So, who wants to start? Milo. Of course. <laughs> um, when the Special Victims Unit uh, Law, Law and Order episode uh, came out, it did more damage to the reputation of the video games industry than anything gamers have ever done. And responsible more than anybody else for that episode uh, were game journalists. They had not only, over the course of more than a decade, created an environment in which it was acceptable to ridicule and deride and to criticize their own readers, but they've also, uh, they had also, once that scandal blew up into the Gamergate controversy, deliberately provoked their readers over and over and over again, and painted their own industry absurdly and unfairly as one that was uniquely hostile to women and minorities. Now, I've seen this happen before in another industry that didn't deserve it either. Um, that's the startup industry in San Francisco. Interestingly, you know, video gaming and startups are probably the two industries where women and minorities are welcomed the most. They're the industries that are disproportionately progressive in terms of politics right the way up and down the corporate food chain. Um, yet they're the industries that have this weird sort of pearl-clutching, hand-wringing, middle-class white guilt about whether or not there are enough women, whether or not there are enough minorities. And this has metastasized into an environment in which it's okay to tweet things like, kill all white men. And in Gamergate, in the gaming industry, it became okay to say that being a straight white male was the lowest difficulty setting. Nobody appreciated the irony of criticizing and ridiculing people for their skin color or for their sex. But game journalists got it into their head that the new sort of progressive feminist-driven politics was something that they should aspire to, and it led them to all kinds of horrible journalistic failings. Now, I've got six, which I'm not going to give you all in one go because it'll be impossible to respond to, six things that I think journalists really screwed up. And I think those six things illustrate really well how to report on these sorts of movements and how to not report on these sorts of movements. Do you want to go over those now or you want to get those guys having their statements? Done? Well, I think I'm going to hand over to the others and then maybe at some point in the, in the next hour, I'd just like to sort of explain to you guys what I think the six big ethical failures, transgressions, betrayals, whatever you want to call it, um, to, uh, to Gamergate have been from the games press and what we can do in future to encourage people to report more responsibly, more truthfully, and to avoid the narrative over fact um, style of activist reporting, which has caused a lot of people a lot of pain. Because ultimately, this isn't just another front in the culture wars. Gamergate is, in a way, a sort of geek civil war. There are lots of people who look very similar to one another, warring over things they really care about, warring over stuff they love, warring over stuff that gave them an escape from life when they didn't have one, gave them an avenue into uh, you know, new imaginative worlds and you know, escapist sort of universes when real life wasn't that great. Games journalists have taken that away from them um, because they've, they've toxified and politicized that gaming space. I think that's a huge and frankly unforgivable betrayal of what gaming journalism was supposed to be there for, there to do, which is to support consumers and to support gamers. Um, I think we'll hand over, but my six points later on I think will explain where we should go from here right, well, and how to get it right in future. Don't forget this conversation's about mainstream media to you know, covering. Sure, but I mean, you know, the, the mainstream media uncritically repeats all of the outright, you know, mendacious falsehoods. So often we've seen it again and again and again in the Gamergate controversy. And with some justification, it's perfectly reasonable for them to assume that game journalists are doing their job properly if they don't know any better. They're looking at fellow, the work of fellow professionals and, and seeing, um, you know, this person has been attacked, this person has, and they, it, it appears on the page of the New York Times. We heard the New York Times praised this morning. The New York Times has done, a, you know, one of the worst jobs of anyone. I'm amazed that nobody said so. The New York Times uncritically reported um, things that they're, you know, with, with very shaky evidence and then gave a platform to one of the people in question. Um, so I'm going to hand over, but I think, you know, when I explain to you, I really am, when I explain to you the six things I think are, are the really serious failings, I think that they'll, they'll serve as a useful guide for the mainstream media so that you know what to look out for next time. Wow, you did that without breathing. 